Welcome everyone to this live podcast on Twitch where you can find news from the research industry that our all researcher keep on researching on various topics and domains to keep our lifestyle better of course and yes this article posted on our website named poorscientist.com if you are willing to check it out please check it out otherwise listening to this podcast will be enough for you guys as it's ex like an archive on the daily basis providing you the information from the research industry so let's get started without wasting any further time the first topic of the day is evidence for new theory of genetic recombination okay let's see in most higher organisms including humans every cell carries two version of each gene which is referred to as alleles uh, so each parent passes on one allele to each offspring as they are linked together on chromosome adjacent genes are usually inherited together however it is not always the case why of course man so here's the solution the answer is recombination a process that shifts the de- uh, the allele content between homo uh, logus chromosomes during cell division mm. Mechani- mm. mechanistically recombination is achieved by crossovers where homologous chromosomes contact each other resulting in the exchange of genetic material crossover have long fascinated scientists and especially plant breeders because manipulating the crossover process offers the potential of increasing genetic diversity and of assembling desired combination of alleles that boost crop productivity crossover are subject to a gold goldilocks principles at least one is required per chromosome pair for a successful sexual reproduction indeed a lack of crossover is a major cause of human trisomy such as in the case of down syndrome crossover number are so tightly regulated and generally do not exceed 3 this limit on the crossover number and therefore recombination achieved by crossover interf- uh, interference a phenomena through which crossover inhibit additional cro- uh, crossover in their vicinity however this will interface work has remained a mystery since it was first discovered some 120 years ago new model of crossover interference now a team led by rafael marcio at the max planning institute of plant breeding research in colgony Germany have found convincing evidence support of a recent proposed model of crossover interference. Mercier and his team together with collaborator in Vogue Spear headed by Stephen Durand, Kun Shin Lian and Jio Li Jing achieved this insert by manipulating the expression of proteins known to be involved in either promoting crossover or any connecting chromosome together in the model plant. Arbitio, Arbidopsis thalaina, a species where Mercier and his colleagues used to gain fundamental insight into the mechanism of heredity. Boosting ex- expression of the pro-crossover b- protein HEI10 resulted in a significant increase in crossover as did disrupting the expression of the protein ZYP1. a constituent of a snp town here complex a pro a protein structure that form between homologous chromosomes when scientists combined the th- uh, two intervention they were surprised to observe a massive increase in crossover showing the he10 dosage and zyp1 jointly control co patterning importantly massively increasing crossover in this way barely affected cell division The considerable increase in crossover upon increasing H1110 levels chimes well 
with an emerging model for how crossover number is regulated. This model formulated by David Zwickard and his team at the Mass Planning Institute of Dynamics for Dynamics and self-organization Gottingen, Germany. It's based on diffusion of the HEI10 protein along the symptom numeral complex and a course uh, sending process leading to well escape HEI 10 fossey that promote crossovers. The model HEI 10 initially forms multiple small foci and is progressively consol consolidated into a small number of large foci that co localize with sites of crossover in this simple model, increasing the level of H1I HEI10 will result in more foci and therefore more crossover. Thus, the formation of droplets along an axis appears to the determinant of crossover sites. Mercier executed by the team finding, but it is also already looking ahead. This result are an exciting insight into a process that has befuddled scientists for a, over a hundred years. Next, we want to better understand what controls the dynamics of the HEI-10 droplets and how they promote crossovers. If we, uh, if we can get a better handle on how the process works, this may allow us selectively boost recombination during plant breeding, enabling the assembly of combination of beneficial alleys that have remained out of reach. The research was published in Nature Communication. I mean, okay, man, great, great evidence for the new theory in the genetic itself in the DNA. S uh, Passing the legacy through the parent uh, chromosome, so yep, and responsible for many other uh, diffusion and cells, so yep. Moving on towards next topic. Geomagnetic field reveal the truth behind biblical narratives. Oh, yeah. Let's read it, and it's from the Hebrew University, Israel, so... Uh, they are more likely on the archaeological side, so yeah, great man. Let's see and uh, what he can, what he found in the archaeological sites. Joint study by Tau and the Hebrew University, involving 20 researchers from different countries and disciplines, has accurately dated 21 restriction layers at 17 archaeological sites in Israel. By reconstructing the direction and odd intensity of the earth magnetic field recorded in burnt remnants, the new data video verify the biblical accounts of the Egyptian, Admion, Assyrian, and Babylonian military campaigns against the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Okay, findings indicate, for example, that the army of Hazel, king of Aram, Damascus, was responsible for the restriction of several sites, Tel Rehov, Tel Seite, and Hovra Tivit, in addition to Gath of the Philistines, whose restriction is noted in the Hebrew Bible. At the same time, the study uh, refutes the prevailing theory that Hazel was the conqueror who destroyed Tel Beth Shean. Other geomagnetic findings revealed at the site in the Negev were destroyed by the Edomites who, uh, who took advantage of the destruction of Jerusalem and the Kingdom of Judah by the Babylonians. Okay. The groundbreaking interdisciplinary study was published in the preceding of the National Academy of Science and is based on the doctoral thesis of Yav Veknin, supervised by Professor Aden Ben Joseph and Professor Ordered Limskirts of Tau Institute of Archaeology and Professor Ron Shear from the Institute of Art Science at the Hebrew University. Okay. The researcher explained that geophysicists attempting to understand the mechanism of Earth's magnetic field uh, track changes in the field throughout history. Okay. 
Today, uh, to this end, they use archaeological findings containing magnetic mine rolls, which, when heated or burned, recorded the magnetic field at the same time of the fire. Okay, great man, great. Thus, uh, in a 2020 study, researchers reconstructed the magnetic field as it was on the 9th of the month of AV 586 BCE, the Hebrew date of the destruction of the first temple and the city of Jerusalem by Nebu Chandansur and his Babylon army. Great man, great. Now using archaeological findings unearthed over several decades at 17 sites throughout Israel, alongside historical information from ancient encryption and biblical accounts. The researchers were able to reconstruct the magnetic field recorded in 21 restriction layers. Oh man, great man, great. They used the data to develop a reliable new scientific tool for archaeological dating. Of course, man, of course. Why Wackening explains that based on the similarity or difference in, in intensity and direction of the magnetic field, we can either code rope date or a disproved hypothesis com- claiming that specific sites were burned during the same military campaign. Moreover, we have constructed a variation curve of field intensity over time which can serve as a scientific dating tool, similar to the radio carving. Radio carbon dating method. Interesting, man. Interesting. I mean, uh, uh, it's a great thing uh, because it's it's going to uh, bring up one more test on the archaeological finding related to the radio carbon dating method. So, yep. One example given by the researcher in the restriction of Gath of the Flintstones identified today at as Tel Sansford in the Judean foothills by Hazel, king of Adam Damascus, various dating methods have placed this event around 830 BC, but were unable to verify that Hazel was also responsible for the destruction of Tel Rehob, Tel Zaite, and Horvath Tivit. Now the new study added following full statistical synchronization between the magnetic field recorded at all of these four sites at the time of destruction makes a very strong case for their destruction during the same campaign. A destruction level at Tel Beth Sheen, on the other hand, recording a totally different magnetic field, refutes the prevailing hypothesis that it too was destroyed by Hazel. Okay, okay. Instead, uh, the magnetic data from Beth Sheon indicate that this city, along uh, with two other sites in northern Israel, was probably destroyed 7200 years earlier, a date which could be corresponds with the military campaign of the Egyptian Pharaoh Shoshank. Okay. Shoshank campaign is described in the Hebrew Bible and in an in an in- inscription on a wall of the temple of Amun in Karnak, Egypt, which mentioned Beth Sheen as one of his conquests. Great man, great. One of the most uh, interesting findings revealed by the new dating method has to do with the end of the kingdom of Judah. Professor Aaron Ben Yosef says the last day of the kingdom of Judah are widely debated. Some researchers relying on archaeological evidence are going that Judah was not completely restored by the, by the Babylonians. Of course, man, of course. While Jerusalem and frontier sites in the Judean front hills ceased to exist, other towns in the niche of the southern Judean mountains and the southern Judean foothills remained all almost unaffected. Now the magnetic result support uh, this hypothesis indicating that the Babylonians were not slowly responsible for Judah ultimately demise. Okay, okay. Several decades after they had destroyed Jerusalem and the first temple surged in the Neg- Negev, which had survived the Babylon campaign were destroyed probably by the Endomites who took advantage of the fall of Jerusalem. This betrayal 
and participation in the destruction of the surviving world may explain why the hebrew bible expresses so much hatred for the endomites for example in the prophecy of obdia okay okay professor odad lipskirts added that the new dating tool is unique because it is based on the geomagnetic data from site yes from uh, site whose uh, exact restriction dates are known from historical sources by combining precise historical information with advanced comprehensive archaeological research we were able to base the magnetic method on reliable and en- encoded chronology a separate paper presenting the scientific principle of the novel arch magnetic dating method is in preparation professor ram shared who led the ge- uh, geophysical expert of the study as well as the department of geomagnetic dating method explains that earth magnetic field is critical to our existence most people do- realize that without it uh, there could be no life on earth since it shields us from cosmic radiation and the solar wind in addition both humans and animals use it to navigate the geomagnetic field is generated by earth outer coat at a depth of 20, uh, 2900 km by currents of liquid iron due to the chaotic motion of this iron the magnetic field changes over time until recently scientists believe that it remains quite stable for decades but arkyo magnetic research has contradicted this assumption by revealing some extreme and unpredictable changes in antiquity our location here in israel is uniquely conductive to arkyo magnetic research due to an abductance of well dated archaeological findings over the past decade we have reconstructed magnetic field recorded by hundreds of archaeological items by combining this data set with the data from yo's investigation of historical destruction layers we were able to form a continuous variation curve showing rapid sharp changes in the geomagnetic field this is wonderful news both of archaeologists who can use uh, who can now use geomagnetic data to determine the age of ancient materials and for geophysicists studying the earth core so i mean uh, there is a new findings given by our archaeological uh, scientists that it's a new parameter set uh, by this uh, by this uh, archaeological researchers that we have and one more uh, parameter which we uh, check upon which is geomagnetic fields uh arkyo sorry arkyo magnetic res- uh, field so i mean great man I, uh, there is a new test on the market itself for the archaeological people uh, over the world so yeah moving on to our next topic machine learning enables an almost perfect diagnosis of an elusive global clear killer sepsis the overreaction of the immune system in response to an infection causes an estimated 20% of deaths globally and as many as 20 to 50% of us hospital deaths each year despite its prevalence and severity however the condition is difficult to diagnose and treat effectively okay the disease can cause decreased blood flow to vital organs inflammation throughout the body and abnormal cl- blood clotting therefore if sepsis isn't recognized and treated quickly it can lead to shock organ failure and death but it can be difficult to identify which pathogen is causing sepsis or whether an infection is in the blood stream or elsewhere in the body and in the many patients with symptoms that resemble sepsis it can be challenging to determine whether they truly have an infection at all 
Now it is situated the Chang Zungbog Biohub CZ Biohub in the Chang Zuckerberg Initiative CZ1 I and UC San Francisco UCSF has developed a new diagnostic me- method that implies machine learning to advance genomic data from both microbe and host to identify and predict sepsis cases as reported on October 22 2022 in Nature Microbiology the approach is surprisingly accurate and has the potential to far exceed current diagnostic capabilities sepsis is one of the top uh, 10 public health issue facing humanity said senior author chas Langlier, MD, PhD, and Associate Professor of Medicine, UCSF, Division of Infectious Disease, and a CZ Biohub investigator. One of the key challenges with sepsis is diagnosis. Existing diagnostic tests are not able to capture the dual-sided nature of the disease, the infection itself, and host immune response to the infection. Current sepsis, uh, sepsis diagnostics focus on detecting bacteria by growing them in culture, a process uh, that is essentially for appropriate antibiotic therapy, which is critical for sepsis survival, according to the researcher behind the new method. But culturing these pathogen is time-consuming and doesn't always currently identify the bacterium that is causing the infection. Similarly, for viruses, PCR tests can defect the virus or infecting a patient, but don't always identify the particular virus that causing sepsis. This result in clinician being unable to identify the cause of sepsis is an estimated 30 to 50 percent of cases, Langlier said. This also led to mismatch in terms of the antibiotic treatment and the pathogen causing the problem. In the absence of the definitive diagnosis, doctors often prescribe a cocktail of antibiotics in an effort to stop the infection, but uh, the overuse of antibiotics has led to increased antibiotic resistance worldwide. Of course, man, of course, right. As physicians, we, uh, we never want to miss a case of infection. Yes. Said Carillion uh, Calfi, MD Mass, Professor of Medicine and Anthesia, at UCSF and co-senior author of the new study. But if we uh, had a test that could help us accurately to determine who doesn't have an infection, then uh, that, uh, that could help us limit antibiotic use in those cases, which uh, would be really good for all of us. Eliminating ambiguity, the researcher analyzed who whole blood and pl- plasma sample from more than 350 critical ill patients who had been admitted to UCS a Medical Center or the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital between 2010 and 2018. But rather than relying on culture to identify pathogens in these samples, a team led by CZ Biohub scientist Norman F. PhD and Anglia Pisco PhD instead used metagenomic next generation sequencing. MNGS. This method identifies all the nucleic acids or genetic data present in a sample, then compares uh, those data to reference genomes to identify the microbial organisms present. This technique allows scientists to identify genetic material from entirely different kinds of organisms, whether bacteria, viruses, or fungi, that are present in the same sample. However, detecting and identifying the presence of pathogen alone isn't enough for accurate sepsis diagnosis. So the biohub researchers also perform transcriptional profiling, which quantifies gene expression to capture the patient response to infection. Next, they applied machine learning to the MNGS and transcription data to distinguish between sepsis and other critical illness and thus confirm the diagnosis. Katrina Kalantar, PhD, a lead computational biologist at CZI and co first author of the study, created an integrated host microbe model trained on data from patients in whom either sepsis or non-infection uh, systematic inflammatory illness has been established, which enables sepsis diagnosis with very high accuracy. 
We developed the model by looking at a bunch of Magda Meta uh, Genomics data alongside results from traditional clinical searches. Cullen thought explained to start the research to identify changes in gene expression between patients with confirmed sepsis and non infectious systematic inflammatory condition that appear clinical similar, then use machine learning to identify the genes that could best predict those changes. The researcher found that when traditional bacterial culture identifies sepsis causing pathogen, there was usually an over uh, abundance of genetic material from the pathogen in the corresponding plasma sample analyzed by MNGS. With that in mind, Kalanthar programmed the model to identify organisms present in disproportionately high abductance compared to other microbes in the sample, and to then compare those at a reference index of well-known sepsis causing microbes. In addition to that, we also noted any viruses that were detected even if they were at lower levels because those really shouldn't be there. Kalanthar explained, with this relatively straightforward set of rules we were able to do pretty well of course almost pro- perfect performance the researcher found that the m ngs method and the their corresponding model worked better than expected they were able to identify 99 percent of confirmed bacterial species cases 92 percent of confirmed viral species cases and were able to predict sepsis in 74 percent of clinical suspected cases that had, hadn't been definitely diagnosed. We were expecting good performance or even great performance, but this was almost perfect, said Lickle Newton, PhD a postdoctoral research in the Calfi lab and co-first author of the study. By using this approach, we get a pretty good idea of what is causing the disease and we know with relatively high confidence if a patient has sepsis or not. The team was also excited to discover that they could use this combined harsh response and microbe detection method to diagnose sepsis using plasma samples, which are routinely collected from most patients as part of standard clinical care. The fact that you can actually identify sepsis patient from this widely available easy to collect sample type has big implication in terms of practical utility, Langler said. The idea for the work stemmed from previous research by Langler, Kalanthar, Kalfi, UCSF researcher and Caesar Biohub, President Joe D. Risi, PhD and their colleagues, in which they use MNGS to effectively diagnose low r- respiratory resip- uh, re- Respiratory uh, uh, tract infection in critically ill patients because the method works so well. We want to see if the same type of approach could work in the context of sepsis, said Kalanthar. Broader implication. The team ho- uh, hopes to build upon this successful diagnostic technique by developing a model that can also predict antibiotic resistance from pathogen detected with this method. We have had some success doing, doing uh, that for resp- respiratory infections. But no one has uh, come up with a good approach for sepsis, Langer said. Furthermore, the researcher hoped to eventually be able to predict outcome of patients with sepsis, such as mortality or length or stay in the hospital, which would provide key information that would allow clinicians to better care for the patient and match resources to the patient who need them the most, Langler said. There are a lot of potential for novel sequencing approaches, such as uh, this to help us more precisely identify the cause of a patient critical illness, co- or added Calfi. If we can do that, it's the first step towards precision medicine and understanding what's going on at an individual patient level. Moving on to our next topic, Ray Enforcement Learning Base 
four leg robotic goal keyboard. Researcher at the Hybrid Robotics Group at UC Berkeley, Simon Fraser University and Georgia Institute of Technology have recently created a reinforcement learning model that allows a quadru- quadrupedal robot to efficiently place all code in the role of goalkeeper. The model, in- introduced in a paper pre published on RZF, imposes the robot skills over time through a trial and error process. The letting quad groups place occurred, we can push the limit of the artificial intelligence of athletic leg drop or robots. Zhang Wang Huang, Zhang Gyu Li, Zhang Zing Zhang, Yiming Ni, Yu Feng Chi, Yun Hao Li, Lin Zhang Yang, Xiu Bing Peng, and Kaushal Srinath. Srinath. The researcher who carried out the study told Tech Explored. Goalkeeping is an interesting but challenging task that requires the robot to reach to the first moving ball, sometimes flying in the air and intercept it using dynamic maneuvers in a very short amount of time, usually within one second. By solving this, we can thus also gain insight about how to create intelligent dynamic legged robots. The key objective of the recent work by Huang and his colleagues was to create a four-legged robot called Keeper that can perfect its skill as it plays just as human goalkeeper would. To do this, the researcher developed a reinforcement learning model that trains the robot via trial and error processes rather than through a fixed human engineer strategy. The robot first learns different locomotion control policies to perform distant skills such as side step, dive and jump while tracking randomized trajectories for the rubber toes. The researcher explained based on the on this control policies, the robot the loans a high level planning policy to select an optimal skill in motion to intercept the ball after examining the detected ball position in robot states. The researcher trained the reinforcement learning model in a series of a soccer game simulation. Subsequently, they deployed the policy it learned on the mini Cheetah, a real quadrupedal robot developed at the Machine Institute of Technology MIT and tested its performance in the real world. The reinforcement learning framework created by Wang and his colleagues was found to greatly improve the ability of the mini Cheetah robot as a soccer goalkeeper. In the team real world test, the robot was able to save 87.5% of 40 random test shots. Sorry. I think that the coolest aspect of our work is that using our proposed method, the quad rupedal robot mini cheetah is able to perform very dynamic and agile locomotion skills such as jumping and diving as well as forge and precise manipulation skills such as pushing the ball away using its swinging legs in a very short amount of time the researcher said this actually pushes the boundaries of leg locomotion showing that the uh, the leg can also be uh, be a manipulator just like it can be for humans in the future the enforcement learning model created by this team of researchers could be used to improve the performance of robot design to participate in robocop and other robotic sco- uh, scorer competition in addition their model could be used to improve the agility and physical abilities of quad ru- uh, Robots designed to tackle and direct different tasks such as search and rescue missions. We hope that we can uh, enable quad rupedal robots to compete with human soccer players in the near future, the researcher added. The robot need to perform larger variety of dynamic and agile motions, attain more intelligence in the soccer game. So I mean these are the things on the uh, doing on the machine learning or the AI to perform more more efficient robots for our use for domestic use and many other uh, use uh, I mean okay man great moving on towards next topic 
Astronomer discovered a pla- planetary system with a Neptune Mars planet and a massive substellar object. Okay, let's see. An international team of astronomers reports the detection of a new planetary system by observing a nearby star known as HD 18599 or Toy. 179 it appeared that this star is orbited by a Neptune Mars exoplanet and a massive substellar object. The finding was detailed in a paper published October 14 on the RZF preprint server. TESS is conducting a survey of about 200,000 of the brightest stars near the Sun with the aim of searching for transisting exoplanets. So far, it has identified nearly 6,000 candidate exoplanets. Test object of interest or TOI of which 266 have been confirmed so far. Now, a group of astronomers led by Slivona Desertera of the Astronomical Observatory of the Padova has recently confirmed another TOI monitored by TESS. The report that a transit signal has been identifying the light curve of the bright Kid was star. Toy 179 other designation HD 18599 and HIP 13754. The planetary nature of the signal was confirmed by follow up observation using the high accuracy radial velocity planet research hubs and spectro polymetric high contrast exoplanet research sphere instruments. As a part of ongoing efforts to validate and characterize young transitioning as a planet identified by TESS, we represent in this paper our analysis of how the system observed around the star HD 18599, HIP 13754, a bright V is equal to 8.99 magnesium and active K-dwarf, also known as TESS object of interest toy 179 the researcher wrote in the paper the new found alien world designated toy 179b is about 2.62 times larger than the earth and 24 times more massive than our planet which yields a relative high mean density of some 7.4 gram per centimeter cube the exoplanet orbit it holds every 4.14 days at a distance of 0.048 AU from it on a significant, significantly eccentric orbit. Furthermore, sphere observation identified another object in the Tau 179 system with an estimated mass of about 83 Jupiter masses. Therefore, at the boundary between brown dwarfs and very low mass stars, the object received designation HD 18599b has a relatively small project separation from the parent star, some 3.3 AU. The host star TOI-179 is of spectral time K to V, has a radius of approximately 0.76 solar radii, while its mass was measured to be 0.83 solar masses. The star is, is estimated to be around 400 million years old and its effective temperature is at a level of 5145 Kelvin. Summing up the result, the author of the study underlined the uniqueness of the toy 179 system, taking into account the property of these components. The toy 179 system represents a high merit laboratory for our understanding of the physical evolution of planets and other low mass objects and of how the planet properties are influenced by dynamically affects and interaction with the parent star. The researcher concluded. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic. Ancient bacteria might lurk beneath Mark's surface. In a first of its kind study research team including Northwestern University Brian Hoffman and Ajay Sharma found that the ancient bacteria would survive close to the surface on Mars much longer than previously assumed and when the bacteria are buried and thus shielded from galactic cosmic radiation and solar protons, they can survive much longer. Thus, 
when mars for example returned to earth scientists should be on the lookout for ancient sleeping bacteria this finding strengthens the possibility that if life were evolved on mars its biological remains might be revealed in future missions including exo mars rosa lind franklin Ro- uh, rover in a mars life explorer which will carry drills to extract material from 2 meters below the surface and because the scientists proved that certain strains of bacteria can survive despite mars harsh environments future astronauts space and space tourists could inadvertently contaminate mars with their own high checking bacteria the paper will be published on tuesday october 25th in the journal astrobiology our model organisms serve as proxies for both a forward contamination of mars as well as backward contamination of earth both of which should be avoided said michael daly a professor of pathology at uniform service university of the health sciences usu and a member of the national academy committee on planetary protection who led the study importantly this finding have biodefense implications implication too because the threat of biological agents such as anthrax remains a concern to military and homeland defense we concluded that terrestrial contamination on mars would essentially be permanent over time frames of thousands of years said hoffman a senior co-author of the study this could complicate scientific ro- uh, efforts to look for martian life like li- uh, likewise If my microbes evolved on Mars, they could be capable of surviving until present day. That means returning Mars samples could contaminate Earth. Hoffman is the Charles E. and the Emma H. Morrison, Professor of Chemistry and Professor of Molecular Biosciences in Northwestern Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. He also is a member of the Chemistry of Life Processor Institute, simulating Mars. The environment on Mars is harsh and unforgiving. The arid and freezing condition which average 80 degrees Fahrenheit minus 63 degrees Celsius at mid latitudes make the red planet seem inhospit- inhospitable to life even more. Mars also is constantly bombarded by intense galactic cosmic radiation and solar protons. To explore whether or not a uh, life could survive in this condition, Daly Hoffman and their collaborators first determined the ionizing radiation survival limits of microbial life. Then they exposed six types of earth-lining, earth-lying bacteria and fungi to a simulated Martian surface, which is frozen and dry, and zapped them with gamma rays or protons to mimic radiation in space. There is no flowing water or significant water in the Martian low atmosphere, so cells and spores would dry out, Hoffman said. It also is known that the surface temperature on Mars is roughly similar to dry ice, so it is indeed deeply frozen. Ultimately, the researchers determined that some terrestrial microorganisms potentially could survive on Mars over geological timescales of hundreds of millions of years. In fact, the researcher discovered that one robust microbe, Dion Nucosus radiodurans, efficiently known as Con and the bacterium, is particularly well suited to surviving Mars' harsh condition. In the novel experiment, Con and the bacterium survive astronomical amounts of radiation in the freezing arid environment for outla- outlasting basal spores, which can survive on the Earth for millions of years. Radical radiation. To test the effect of radiation, the team exposed sample to large doses of gamma radiation and protons, typical to what Mars receives in the near south surface, and for smaller doses, which would occur if a microorganism was deeply buried. Then, Hoffman team of Northwestern used an advanced spectroscopy technique to measure the accumulation of manganese antioxidants in their radiated microorganism cells. According to Hoffman, the size of the radiation in those radiated microorganisms or spores can survive, correlates with the amount of 
magnesium antioxidant contains therefore more magnesium antioxidant means more resistant to radiation more and on survi- uh, survival in earlier study previous researchers found the common in the bacterium was suspended in liquid can survive 25000 units of radiation or grace the equivalent to about 1 to 1.2 million years just uh, below mars surface but the new study found that when the hot bacterium is dried frozen deeply buried which would be typically to a modern environment it could weather 140 uh, 140000 grades of radiation this rose is 20 uh, 28000 times greater than what would kill a human all the corn and the bacterium could only survive for a few hours or at the surface while bathed in ultraviolet light its lifetime improves dramatically when it shaded or located directly below mars surface but it just 10 cm below the martian surface conan and the bacterium survival period increased to 1.5 million years and when buried 10 meters down the pumpkin colored bacterium could survive a whopping 280 million years looking forward to future missions This astonishing survival feat is partially thanks to the bacterium genomic structure. The researcher found long suspected researcher discovered that corn and the bacterium chromosome and plasmids are linked together, keeping them in perfect alignment ready to for repair after intense radiation. That means that if a microbe similar to corn and the bacterium evolved during a time when water large flowed on Mars, then its living remains could still be dormant in the deep sub surface although d radiated uh, deodorants buried in the mountain sub surface could not uh, could not survive dormant for the estimated 2 to 2.5 billion years since flowing water disappeared on mars say such mountain environments are regularly altered melted by meteorite impacts daily said we suggest that periodic melting could allow intermittent repopulation and dispersal also if mart and life were existed even if viable life forms are not now present on mars their micromolecules and the viruses could sorry would survive much much longer does and the probability that if life ever evolved on mars this will be revealed in future missions the study is tidal effects on off desiccations and freezing on microbial ionizing radiation survivability considerations consideration for mars sample return moving on to this next topic how do you solve a problem like a proton smash it then build it back with the machine learning oh oh okay okay let's see protons are tiny yet uh, carry a lot of heft of course they inhabit the center of every atom the universe and play a critical role in one of the strongest forces in nature and yet proton have drawn have it drawn down to earth side too like most particle proton has spin that act like a tiny magnet living a proton spin or polarity may sound like science fiction but it is the basis of technological breakthroughs that have become essential to our daily lives such as magnetic resonance imaging mri and the invaluable medical diagnostic tool despite such advancements the proton inner workings remain a mystery basically everything around your exists because of protons and yet we still don't understand everything about them one huge puzzle that physicists want to solve in the proton spin said ben neckman a physicist who leads the machine learning group in the physics division at the department of energy lawrence berkeley national laboratory berkeley lab understanding how and why protein proton spin could lead to technological advancement we can't even imagine today and help us understand a strong force a fundamental property that gives all protons therefore atom mass but it's not just an easy problem to solve for one you can't exactly pick up a proton and place it in a petri dish protons are un 
phantomly small the radius is a hair shy of 1 quad trillion of a meter and visible light passes right through them what's more you can't even observe and they are inside with the world most powerful electron microscopes a recent work by nakman and his team could bring of bring us closer to solving the this perplexing proton puzzle as a member of the h1 collaboration and international group that now includes 150 scientists from 15 institutes and 15 countries and is based at the desi national research center in germany nagman and has been developing new machine learning algorithm to accelerate the analysis of data collected decades ago by hedo in the world most powerful electron proton collider that run at desi from 1992 to 2007 had a, a ring four miles in circumference worked like a giant microscope that accelerated both electron and proton to nearly the speed of light the particle would collide head on which could scatter a proton into the constituent parts quarks and gluons scientists at hello took measurement of the particle debris cascading from this electron from this electron proton collision what physics called deep inelastic scattering through sophisticated cameras called particle detectors one of which was the h1 detector unfolding secret of the strong force the h1 stopped collecting data in 2007 the year hera was d commission today the h1 collaboration is still analyzing the data and publishing data publishing results in scientific journals it can take a year or more when using conventional computational technique to measure quantity related to proton structure the strong force such as how many particles are produced when a proton collides with an electron and if a researcher wants to examine a different quantity such as how fast particles are flying in the wake of quark gluon jet stream they would have to start the long computation process all over again and wait yet another year a new machine learning tool called omnifold which nagman code develop can simultaneously measure many quantities at once they are by reducing they are by reducing Uh, the amount of time to run an analysis from years uh, to minute omnifold does uh, this by using neural network advance to combine computer simulation with data a neural network is a machine learning tool that processes complex data is impossible for scientists to do manually Nagman uh, and his team applied Omnifold to H1 experimental data for the first time <coughs> in a June issue of the journal Physical Review Letters, and more recently at the 2022 Deep Inelastic Scattering (DIC) conference. Scattering DIC conference to develop. to develop omnifold and test its robustness against h1 data nagman business mckuni uh, opposed doctor research in the data analytic service das group at berkeley labs national energy resource scientific computing center nersec and the nersec scale science application program for learning well needed a supercomputer with a lot of powerful gpus graphic comp- uh, processing unit nagman said Consistently, 
Paul Mutor, a new supercomputer designed to support simulation, data analyst, analytics, artific and artificial intelligence experiment requiring multiple GPUs at a time, had just opened up in the summer of 2021 for an early size phase, allowing scientists to test the system on real data. The Paul Mutor supercomputer is named for the Berkeley. Lab cosmologist and novel Leonardo Sol Perlmutter. Because the Perlmutter supercomputer allows us, us to use 128 GPUs simultaneously, we were able to run all the steps of the analysis from data processing to the derivation of the results. To less than a week instead of months, this improvement allows us to quickly optimize the neural network we trained and to achieve a more precise result for the observer. Wavels we measured, said Mikuni, who are, is also a member of the H1 collaboration. A central task in this measurement is accounting for detector distortions. The H1 detector, like a watchful guard standing sentry at the entrance of a sold out concert arena, monitor particles as they fly through it. One source of measurement errors happens when particles fly around the detector rather than through it. For example, sort of, uh, sort of like a ticketless concert gear come jumping over an unmonitored fence rather than entering through the ticket security gate. Collecting of all distortions simultaneously has not been possible due to limited computational method available at the time. Our understanding of subatomic physics and the data analysis technique have advanced significantly since 2007, and so data scientists can use new insight to analyze the H1 data, Neckman said. Scientists today have a renewed interest in the head of particle experiment as they hope to use the data and more precise computer simulation formed by tools like Omnifold to aid in the analysis of results from future electron proton experiments, such as at the Department of Energy Next Generation Electron Ion Collider (EIC), the EIC is to be uh, is to be built in Brookhaven National Laboratory in partnership with the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility. Will be a powerful and versatile new machine capable of colliding high-energy beams of polarized electron with a wide range of ions or change atoms across many energies, including polarized protons and some polarized ions. It's exciting to think that our method could one day help scientists answer the question that shall remain about the storage force. Neckman said, even though this work might not lead to practical application in the near term, understanding the bulking box of nature is why we are here to seek the ultimate truth. These are steps to understanding at the most basic level what everything is made of. That is what drives me. If we don't do uh, the research now, we will never know what exciting new technological advances we will get the benefit future scientists. Moving on to our next topic, UV to red light, converting films, accelerate plant growth could help improve global food supply issues. An interdisciplinary team from Hokkaido University Engineering and Agriculture Department and the Institute of Chemical Reaction Design and Discovery, WPRIC Red DD, has developed a European Based a thin film coating that they demonstrate excellent both vegetable, vegetal, plant, and tree growth. This technology can improve plant production speed and has the potential to help address global food supply issues. Plants convert visible light to energy via a process called photosynthesis. In addition to visible light, sunlight also controls ultraviolet UV light. Researchers in this study aim to provide plants with additional visible light to use in photosynthesis by employing a wavelength converting material WCM that can convert the UV, uh, UV light into red light. Researchers developed a WCM based uh, on an Europium complex and made a thin film coating that can be applied to commercially available plastic sheets 
they're not only sure that the film converts uv light uv light to red light but also that the film does not block any of the beneficial visible light from the sun the film was then tested by comparing plant growth using sheets with the without the wcm coating trials were performed for or both swiss card chad vegetal uh, vegetal plant in japanese lush trees in summers when uh, days are long sun irradi- irradiation is strong a so significant difference was observed for swiss uh, chad when using the wcm films in winter however when days are shorter and sunlight is weaker swiss chard uh, plants grown using the wcm films showed 1.2 films went to uh, 1.2 times greater uh, plant height and 1.4 times greater biomass after 63 days researcher attributed this accelerated growth to the increased supply of red light provided by the wcm films trials involving japanese large trees also showed accelerated growth seeding seedlings showed a higher relative growth rate in the initial four month of growth resulting in a stem diameter 1.2 fold larger and total biomass 1.4 fold larger than trees grown without the wcm coating critically this enables the seedling to reach the standard size for planting the forestry of Hokkaido of within one year use of wcm films could shorten the growth period of seedlings from 2 years to 1 year resulting in more cost efficient plant production this technology also has the potential to help with food security issues in colder climates and is beneficial because it doesn't require any electricity to operate researcher sees the customizability of the technology as a special promising by using a coating of wavelength changing material we were able to successfully create a transparent film it demonstrated its ability to accelerate plant growth said siona shoji lead author of the study published in the scientific reports by rationally designing the light emitting iron we can freely control the color of emitted light to be other colors like a green or yellow so we expect to be able to create wavelength converting films that are optimized for different plant types this opens a large avenue of future development for next generation agri- agriculture and forestry engineering moving on to the next topic new research shows how octopuses may have evolved A new paper in Genome Biology and Evolution indicates that a type of octopus appears to have evolved independently to develop something resembling a shell, despite having lost uh, the genetic code that produced actual shells in its ancestors and relatives. Arginato Argo is a species of octopus that lives in tropical and subtropical open seas. Female Argonauts have a protective spoiled shell-like a case which protect the eggs inside researchers have long wondered what the origin of this egg case it looks very much like the shell of the commonly known purely knotless the very distant relative of the argonaut which has a true hard shell and lies on the ocean floor but uh, that may just be a coincidence While the argonaut egg case and the nodal shells are formed through the secretion of proteins, they are reportedly formed differently and look dissimilar at the microscopic level. Did the egg case evolve from the shell or did it develop independently? By sequencing the drop genome of the spe- uh, species, a team of researchers from Japan led by Masaaki Yoshida and Devin Stia Marga attempt to reveal the genomic background of argonauts and show how the species adapted to the open ocean and acquired a shells like egg case scientists previously had avoided targeting argonauts since it was difficult to keep the animals in aquaria for research purposes the author here however had access to 
location the sea of japan that was ideal for acquiring fresh samples the new genome data uncovered here provide insight into several features related to shells evolution and in case formation the researcher found that sorry found the case protein coding genes in organoids and discovered the most of the genes were not used to form shells in distinctly related species including the notile Nautilus. This suggests uh, that while the distant ancestor of Argonaut octopus likely had shells, the shell didn't evolve into X cases. The Argonaut genome is particularly intriguing because it shows that the break in sedentary uh, reported in the known octopus genome is not a general trait of this group, said Yoshida and Seti Marga. We ha- have demonstrated that contrary to popular belief, cephalopods do not necessarily exhibit a distant genome evolution. We anticipate that how that our findings will further the research of metazoan, melolusk, uh, and cephalopod genome evolution, which has remained largely unexplored thus far. Moving on to our next topic, virtual atops we identify a 17th century mummified toddler hidden from the sun. Scientists based in Germany have examined a 17th century child mummy using cutting edge science alongside historical records to shed new light on renunciance. Ren- Assisian's childhood. The child was found in an aristo- uh, aristocratic Australian family crypt where the condition allowed for natural mummification, preventing, pre- uh, preserving soft tissues that contain critical information about his life and death. Curiously, this was the only uh, unidentified body in the crypt buried in an unmarked wooden coffin instead of the elaborate metal coffins reserved for other members of the family buried there. The team, led by the doctor Andreas Nadlik of the academic clinic Munich, Bung Bogen Hansen carried out a virtual auto- auto- by sea and radiocarbon testing and examined family records and key material clues from the burial to try to understand who the child was and what his short life looked like. This is only one case, said Nellick, lead author of the paper published today in Front Layers in Medicine. But as we know, that the early infant death rates generally were very high at that time. Our observation may have considerable impact in the overall all life reconstruction of infants even in higher social classes. Moving on to this next topic, well fed but not well nourished. The virtual autopsy was carried out through CT scanning, Nelic and his team measured bone lens and looked at tooth adoption and the formation of long bones to determine that the child was approximately a year old when he died. The soft tissue showed that the child was a boy and overweight for his age, so his parents were able to feed him well, but the bones told a different story. The child ribs had become malformed in the pattern called a reatic rosary, which is usually seen in severe Rickards or Screwy, although he received enough food to put on weight, he was still malnourished. While the typical boying of the bones seen in Richards was absent, this may have been because he did not walk or crawl. Since the virtual autopsy revealed they had, he had inflammation of the lung characteristics of pneumonia and the children with rickets are more vulnerable to pneumonia. This nutritional deficiency may even have 
contributed to his early death. The combination of obesity along with the severe vitamin deficiency can also be explained by generally good uh, nutritional status along with an almost complete lack of sunlight exposure, said Nellick. We have to reconsider the living condition of high aristocratic infants of previous population. The son of a powerful count, however, all the knowledge and esteem had established a powerful cause of death, the question of the child identity re, uh, remained. Deformation of his skull suggested that a simple wooden coffin wasn't quite large enough for the child. However, specialist examination, examination, examination of his clothing showed that he had been buried in a long hooded coat made of expensive silk. He was also buried in a crypt exclusively reserved for the powerful counts of Star Hamburg, who buried their title holders, mostly firstborn sons, and their wives there. This meant uh, that the child was more, uh, most likely a firstborn son of Count of Star Hamburg. Radiocarbon dating of skin sample suggested he was buried between 1550 and 1625 BC, uh, CE, sorry, while historical records of the crypt management indicated that his burial probably took place after the crypt renovation around 1600 CE. He was the only infant buried in the crypt. We have no doubt on the fate of our other infants of the family, Nellick said, regarding the unique bu- burial. According to our daughter, the infant was most probably the count firstborn son after erection of the family crypt, so special care may have been applied. This meant a dirt. There was only one likely candidate for the little boy in the silk coat, Richard William, whose grieving family buried him alongside his grandfather and namesake Richard von Star Hamburg. Moving on to the next topic, researcher created first quasi particle bone. Bose Einstein condensate. Okay. Physicists have created the first Bose Einstein condensate, the mysterious fifth state of the matter, made from quasi particle entities that do not count as elementary particle but that can still have elementary particle property like charge and spin. For decades, it was unknown whether uh, they could undergo Bose. Einstein condensation in the same way as real particles and it's now appear that they can. The finding is said to have a significant impl- impact on the development of quantum technologies including quantum computing. A paper describing the process of creating of the substance achieved a temperature a hair breadth from absolute zero was published in the journal Nature Communication. Bone science and condensate are sometimes described as the fifth state of matter alongside solids, liquid gases, and plasmas. Theoretically predicted in the early 20th century, both science and condensate or B- BEC were only created in a lab as recently as 1995. They, also, uh, they are also perhaps the oldest state of matter, with a great deal about them remaining unknown to science. BEC occurred when a group of atoms is cooled to within billions of degrees above absolute zero. Researchers commonly use laser magnet traps to steadily reduce the temperature of the gas, typically composed of tributium atoms, at this ultra cool temperature. The atoms barely move and begin to exhibit very strange behavior. They, are exp- uh, they experience the quantum, the same quantum state. Almost like code and photon is in a laser and start to clump together, occupying the same volume as an indistinguishable superatom. The collection of uh, atoms 
essentially behaves as a single particle permanently bc remains the subject of much basic research and for simulating condensed matter system burden principle they have application in quantum information processing quantum computing still in early stage of the development make use of a number of different system but they all depend upon quantum bits or qubits that are in the same quantum state most bc are fabricated from dilute gases of ordinary atom but until now bc made out of exotic atom has never been achieved exotic atoms are atoms in which one subatomic particle such as an electron or a proton is replaced by another subatomic particle that has the same charge positronium for example is an exotic atom made of an electron and is positively charged antiparticle of positron an exciton is another example another such example when light hits a semiconductor the energy is sufficient to excite electron to jump up from the valence of level of an atom to its conduction level this is excited electron then flow flare freely in an electric circuit current in essence transforming light energy into electrical energy when the negatively charged electron form this jump the space left behind or a hole can be treated as if it uh, were a positively charged particle the negative electron positive hole are attracted and thus bound together combined this electron hole pair is a is an electrically neu- neutral quasi particle called an exciton a quasi particle is a particle like entity that doesn't count as one of the 17 elementary particles on the standard model of particle of particle physics that but uh, that can still have elementary particle properties like charge and spin the exciton quasi particle can can also be described as an exotic atom because it, it is in, in fact a hydrogen atom that has had in its single positive proton replaced by a single positive hole exciton comes in, in two flavored ortho excitons in which the spin of the electron is parallel to spin it of its hole and para excitons in which the electron spin is anti parallel parallel but in the opposite direction to that of its hole electron hole system have uh, been used to create other phases of matter such as electron hole plasma and even exciton liquid droplets the researcher wanted to see if they could make a bc out of excitons direct observation of an exciton condensate in a three dimensional semiconductor has been high highly sought after since it was first theoretically proposed in 1962 nobody knew whether quasi particle could undergo boss einstein condensation in the same way as real particle said mukado kuata gonakami a physicist at the university of tokyo and co-author of the paper it's kind of the holy grail of how of low temperature physics the researcher thought that hydrogen like para excitons created in corpus oxide co2o a compound of copper and oxygen were one of the most promising candidates for fabricating exciton bc in a bulk semiconductor because for their life long lifetime attempts uh, at creating para exciton bc at liquid helium temperature of around 2k had been made in 1990s but failed because in order to create a bc auto out of excitons temperature for load then that are needed ortho excitons cannot reach uh, such a low temperature as they are too short lived para excitons however uh, are experimental well known to have a, to have an extremely long uh, lifetime of, of over several hundred nanosecond sufficiently long to cool them down through the desired temperature of a bc 
the team manager to drop Pada Exardones in the bulk of uh, CU2O uh, below 400 Milik uh, Kelvins using a delusion uh, refrigerator a cryogenic device that cools up mixing two isotopes of helium together which is commonly used by scientists attempting to realize quantum computers. They uh, then directly visualize the exciton BEC in real space by the use of mid-infrared induced absorption imaging. A type of microscopy ma making use of light in the middle of the infrared range. This allowed the team to take precision measurements including uh, the, the density and temperature of the excitons. Then it down enabled them to mark out the differences and similarities between exciton BEC and regular atomic BEC. The group next year will be uh, to investigate the dynamics of how the exciton BEC forms in a bulk semiconductor and to investigate collective excitation of exciton BEC. The ultimate goal is to build a platform based on a system of exciton BEC. For further elucidation of its quantum properties and to develop a better understanding of the quantum mechanics of qubits that are strongly coupled to the environment. Okay, so these are the things, these are the study given by our researcher that how the quasi particle of the, I mean, it's a repeat uh, already discussed in the previous podcast, so yep, don't worry. Never mind. At last, I just want to say, you guys, stay healthy, keep researching, stay healthy, stay curious.